welcome to yet another edition of Let's Talk with Ludra Care. Well, today I have a special person and uh, her name is Joanne. And I'm sure that by the time we download everything we have for you today, you will really love it. Again, I am Ulu Joke and the program is Let's Talk. The topic for today is boundaries, setting boundaries. What are the boundaries you don't want people to step, go beyond, is what we're going to be talking about today. Thanks, Dave, for joining me. My pleasure. It's nice having you here, you actually. Too. So, doing, um, let, actually, we're talking about boundaries, and you could hear me when I was doing my intro. Now, how would you define boundaries? Mm, I would say the line that marks the limits. Mm. of how far okay. a person can go. Mm. That's my own understanding of what that really means. And I guess everybody definition of boundary can be a little different mm -hmm. more so. So that's my own definition of boundary. So now, would you say you have some set out boundaries that people must not cross? Of course. I, okay. think, I think that applies <laughs> to everybody. All right. <laughs> From the moment I meet anyone, I always have a very specific boundary set so it's like a line you must not cross mm. and then obviously the more we get to know each other then maybe that boundary starts to be le you know less and less okay yeah so. so now looking at the word boundaries actually we let's start from the family point of view oh. mother daughter father son you know growing up together where you don't more have like, your own privacy more like growing up Africa <laughs> <laughs> you know there are some times that even moms, you know, they try to play on your intelligence uh, or try to manipulate you. Uh -huh. Like, okay, do you I want you to do this? There's and no you're like, no, boundary. mom, I don't want to do it at all. <laughs> and you know, you're like, actually, I'm your mommy now. You have to listen to me. <laughs> There's no such an when you're young. There's no such <laughs> But you growing to... up, you still have to make that boundary. Obviously, so obviously. how do you, how can maybe someone out there is finding it difficult um, to actually create boundaries in the sense that you are at a certain age okay. and now... Um, you want to try, you want to think for yourself, you want mm. to reason for yourself, but virtually everything, natural occurrence is actually standing in your way. Mm. That's a really good one. I'm thinking how to go about setting one as you're getting older and you feel like there's not, you know, mm -hmm. this is the time you want to start to like put limits as to yeah. what you want people to be. I feel like it's just a matter of going and doing it because even me, it wasn't easy at first because I remember. Oh, my mom would just randomly tell people, oh, don't you know how to do this? And then all of a sudden, they tell my mom, okay, oh, she do it? Instead of, and then my mom was like, yeah, yeah, she's free. She's going to come, come. She's going to do it. And I'm like, mom, did you ask me first? Like, you ha you didn't even ask if I, I'm interested yeah, or even exactly. if I'm available. You just mm -hmm. went ahead and tell the people I'm available without asking me. So to me, it's more also like, uh, mom, this is the time we need to start, like, talking mm -hmm. about the fact that you can't, it's not your, it's not basically your decision to kind of like, do whatever you want with my time. Mm -hmm. I need to let you know, like, if I can do you need to first of all ask, ask me, me and see if I'm yeah. available. You can't just, like, assume I know I'm on, I, obviously I'm your kid mm -hmm. and you feel like, oh, whatever I say, go, she's gonna do it regardless. <laughs> but it's like, no, ma, you, it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that it's anymore. It's like they're using panadol for your exactly. own Exactly. It's like, it doesn't work like that anymore. Like, I understand, like, at one point, mm -hmm. I used to be like, okay, no problem. I'm, I'll do it, I'll do it. But then now it's like, I have other things that I would, would like to do with my own time. So if you ask me, I can let you know whether, you know, I can work up to it or maybe I will find a space that I can like, okay, reach some sort of agreement to okay. help that person out, but not necessarily just like volunteering my time to, to well, you as you please. Or you me to do exactly. it. Exactly. Really, so because, because you want to look nice. Exactly. So I think <laughs> it's just the more so like starting to come out and like giving some sort of like, okay, ma, that it doesn't go, that's not the way it works anymore. Yeah. I need you to start like understanding that I'm not the little child anymore. Mm -hmm. I have my own mm -hmm. voices now. Mm -hmm. Obviously our parents don't see it like that because it's very hard growing up in Africa. <laughs> and I will always say Africa because to them it's like, you are forever their kid. Exactly. I remember even telling my mom like, watch, the moment I move out at the end of that, she's like, watch, I will call you wherever time I want. There's no such thing forever, my baby. I said, uh, okay, that's what you think. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it's just a more so like you starting to like voice your opinion because if you never do it, mm. then they will really never know that you do have like, you know, the boundaries, the boundaries and things that you would like to have them understand. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, you know what? This is the way I think. This is what I would rather you not do. Okay. And I feel like a lot of people tend to have that difficult, difficult time being able to express, you know, that. I think they are just trying to be nice. Like, oh, if you know, there's this fear that 
naturally they put in us while growing up the fact that okay you have to respect a lot your of elders, elders. <laughs> and then, you know there's this thing again that when an elderly person is talking to you or someone is talking to you're you to... you don't look into the person's eye well of course that looks to be it sounds to be like a form of respect but, then, but in another world it's if you don't look straight into my more eyes like then, more so in this country <laughs> exactly you that. think you have something to hide mm -hmm. so you know, all of these things too, has to do with cultures and or, right. or someone who has a inferiority complex. Oh yeah, who is trying to like okay, you or trying me. to find a voice exactly. More so. so if anybody calls him or ah uh, do this, come here, let's do this mm. before you know it. Even if in, the, in your heart of heart, yeah. you know you are You're not, not content you about can't it. Do it really. Right, but because you don't want to lose either lose your friendship, right. You don't want to lose your space. Uh -huh. You want, you know, you're just looking for a place to fit in, like right. you said. So you just see yourself doing things that naturally. Like you're not happy about. Exactly, you're not happy uh, about. I think I've been accused of being that person who is very outspoken or more so like, oh, um, <laughs> you, you know I mean? <laughs> like, oh, do you go do this? And I give you that look like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, huh, no, it's not happening. Because thank God for the parent that I have, they've always had, uh, given us that opportunity to really express, like, you know, more okay. so wh whether we want to do it or not, although at times it can be a little, you know, like, I'm your parent, I'm your mom, like, where are you coming from? But that, at the end of the day, it's still, like, we still have that opportunity to be able to, like, say, nah, I don't want to do it right now. Mm. It's not necessarily that I won't do it, just not okay. the time that you want me to do it, because simply I just don't have that time. I will mm. do it another time, but not right in the minute. So, I've been very outspoken in that sense like when people just think i should be available to do whatever they ask me to do it's like mm -hmm. oh sorry no i'm not doing it anymore <laughs> because to me it's like for me to really want to do something i need to be content about it i need to fully want to do it mm. and if i'm happy to do those things you okay. can definitely see in the way i go about doing it but when i'm being forced to do something oh my goodness guess what i will rush i will do it in such a in such a way that you yourself would not be content, would not be happy with the way I'm doing it. Like, let me it. just do it. And exactly, I do, exactly. So if I do something because I really want to do it, then the whole process of it, everything, the, the outcome of it, even, even at the end of it, it's like, wow. So I simply don't, yeah, no. So now I want us to delve a little deeper in the aspect of um, you now you talked about moving out, you know, and with that, you moving out of the house is as a result of you wanting to create your boundaries. Exactly. You wanted to let them know that, yes, you're old enough to stand on your feet, right. be by yourself and make your own decisions. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you have choices of food you would want to eat. Obviously. But no. when mommy says, this is what we're eating, that's what you're eating. No, not really. I mean, <laughs> you, know, you know, I remember growing up, really, uh, I don't really like Oh, really. okay. I don't really like it, but my mom thought it's a, an escape route for me to not want to pound. Oh, okay. So she'll tell me, <laughs> you even to pound? You <laughs> to she'll tell me, even if you don't want to eat pound, you, you see, I'll pound take out your yam, right? But you, still pound it but you see this yam, <laughs> we'll pound it together. <laughs> you know, but for her, she doesn't understand the fact that, okay, it's not like. I don't want to pound. Mm. Of course, I'm supposed to help out. Obviously. But she didn't. She didn't just understand the fact that I don't want to. I don't like this thing, and it's also a sort of boundary for me. Like, no, this is a no no for mm. me. But to her, you're trying to run away from a responsibility from duty, and trying to enforce it on you. Mm. So you know, now you be in the house. That means at that point you can't say no. My mom, to, she used to be somebody that, if you say okay, you don't want to eat this. You can't eat any other thing. Oh, really? So yes, you have to eat what she tells you to eat. This oh, is what the family is eating, mm. and that's what I've grown up to do. But me moving out of the house right now, you, you have that. I have right that choice. Even, you have that choice. I, you yes. Your own. Okay. And in another instance, you living in someone else's right. house, where even if you don't like the food that was being, you cooked, have to eat. You just have to eat oh, it. No. You, you know, at that point, you have your boundaries. Like, I don't like this food. Mm. But because you're not in your parents' house or mm. in your own house, Feel the pressure you, too. yes, you have to bring, you have to overlook your boundaries. Right. Want to do something. And in, the, in your heart, you're not happy. Mm. You know, these are the ways that we tend to want to give excuses for others while we suffer. Mm. It, of, my younger brother, may God bless him. I remember <laughs> once, I, you know why? He sets his boundaries right from the very beginning. Really? He's the last one, right? It's always but like that. My dear, the last one this guy 
broke out. Like, no. You know, and I remember my mom, we traveled and mm -hmm. then when we, we went visiting. So when we got to one of the uncle's house, they gave us, he doesn't like beans. So they now gave us beans. My brother said, no. I'm not interested. Look at this boy. In someone else's house. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I You're still making a dress like you can't. You don't yeah, want to eat it. It's something you don't like. Of course, but it's not your father's house. Uh, you sorry, know, for no. me, I felt no. Whatever they give to me, I will eat. Ah, uh, I think it's a it's something that the elder the elderly child tends to deal with. I think the younger one tends to have more choice rather okay. than the elder one because the elder one felt like oh I should not because you are like basically the one setting the example for okay. the younger one. Mm. So you always like oh I should you know always do what they what the elders <laughs> want me to do. But then the ones behind you is like, uh-huh. Because he has his boundaries. And I'm just going to do exactly. me. Exactly. So, because I have some other stuff, I have uh, other siblings as well that will probably eat whatever, whatnot. But me and the youngest one, we're the last two. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> if I don't so want something, not like it, I'm not exactly. You're not even trying to pretend exactly. it's like, to you know, like it. I just simply don't like it. I remember uh, growing up, obviously, I came here when I was like at the age of when I, um, teen, and I came here in my mm -hmm. early teens, mm -hmm. and, uh, well, like, I wasn't a teenager yet. I was no, you were not well. a teenager. <laughs> yeah, I was not a teenager yet. I thought I was, but I wasn't. <laughs> but I came here from Nigeria, obviously, and at the time we, was going, we were growing up being raised by my grandma. And as a kid growing up, I remember she, we, she used to um, prepare chicken and all those things. And me not liking all those things. I don't like meat, period. So I was like, uh, I don't want that. So because of me, she would buy fish and cook fish oh, separately. Wow. My own stew in a small little pot, and every everybody else's will have. So That's I grew. It's not even. It's not necessarily being spoiled. It's just simply <laughs> I didn't like it because growing up okay. eating all those things used to get stuck in my in my um, you know between Seriously, my yeah. teeth, and I used to go so crazy like I can't stand constantly having to dig it out and all those things. So I never used so to like it. So she respected. So she re es especially basically. So she mm -hmm. really respect my choices. What okay. I prefer to eat. Mm -hmm. So the same thing basically happened when I move up here. When my mom be like, oh, we're going to cook chicken. I'm like, mom, but I don't want chicken. Then she was like, okay, this is what we're going to do. We'll make chicken now, and then in a few days, we'll make, you know, fish. So that way, it's like, oh, this is what we're doing, but we'll get, you'll get to have what you also want in a few days. So okay. it's like, she respect my choices, but at the end of the day, she's also kind of saying, putting her whole foot down, like, well, this is what we're going to cook now, but in a few days, we'll make chicken, you know. So at the end of the day, it's like give and you know give and take. It's like okay, this is what I'm gonna give mm -hmm. you now, and then you get to have what you want at the end of the day. Now looking at the family aspect, mm -hmm. you getting married, moving to your husband's home, you know there are also boundaries. Obviously, because at that point in time, now you're not responsible for yourself anymore. You're responsible for someone else. Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, our culture and tradition says. If you're married to your husband, you're not just married you're to him. You're married to You're married family. to this family. <laughs> <laughs> so now, <laughs> and there are times that you will need privacy. But there's no such thing. So how do you set the, such boundaries? Oh, I think... Hmm. And still I think, be, I think from the moment, obviously, I think from the moment you're dating that person, <laughs> I like to say, not necessarily because I, you know, mm -hmm. but I think you two as a couple, she already discussed that. You don't do it after you're married because then by then it's a little too late. I think either both of you should already say, okay, this is what I will take and this is what I won't take. And obviously, I think he will respect that when you're truly honest. Mm. Because I feel like that tends to be an issue between, uh, especially couples, couples right? because everybody like you're play, you're trying to play a role that you're mm. not happy about. And then once you're married, you're trapped. Mm. And then all of a sudden it becomes a big issue that you start to explode at every little thing you guys fight about it. And it become a big issue. Mm. So I think going into a relationship is something that you definitely have to already discuss. Like, okay, let's figure out what each other's boundary is. So we don't like necessarily overstep or even like when you're being introduced to the other person's family. I know like some people believe, oh, you're supposed to kneel down and all those things. Yeah, I that's don't, a sign of respect. Uh, it's a yeah. sign of respect. It's African But not culture. necessarily, that's the only sign of respect. So, I feel like that's not the only way you can so show. The ways? Me, personally, I respect you regardless mm. whether I need that or not. Mm. The way I relate to you, you should already know that I respect you. Uh, even the way, not, because... Speaking in English to an African uh, to our, our African parents could be considered disrespectful. 
they pre because you don't have that or oh, the way we say things in your yeah. is a little different yeah. because when you're talking to your elder you use air eh, so that mm -hmm. kind of give that form of respect mm -hmm. but when you speak in english there's no such yeah, thing yeah. so there will be times that you will say something that might come off as rude to them but you don't that's not the way you're implying that's not the way you mean it to come about but mm -hmm. the way they receive it at the other end could come off as oh you're being disrespectful so the same thing goes like I feel like what it, the way I relate to a lot of elderly people, especially the ones that come to my mom's house or the one that visit my mm -hmm. parents' house, just alone, like the, the brightness in my face when I see you, like, oh my God, how you doing? Like stuff like that. Not necessarily am I going to meet all the way down, but I do like this little, like, I don't, it's not necessarily a curtsy, but more like I do like a little halfway mm -hmm. bent, like, how you doing? And it's of like, of course, you don't have to go all the way down. But some people still, still believe, but some people believe that you still need to bend down and touch the ground. Well, it depends, really, because if you can do it, why not do it? I it don't yeah. take anything out of you. That's what I will they make any, you, it's kind of hair <laughs> with actually be not be off your head. I, but, you're right, but then I don't do it. I, I don't do it for my parents. Maybe, yes. So now doing it for somebody else's parent, I feel like I'm being rude to my own. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Because if I don't bend down to greet on, uh, on the floor for my own parent, why am I doing it for somebody else's parent? I understand yeah. this is a man I'm, I'm marrying too. And because I, re you know, I want to well, be accepted. Well, you already did. You have to frustrate now. So would you that say no, no that I'm telling you that's something I've already I've, I've already been talking about to my mom like is it necessary like, you know, if I do that but, but then culture, I know that's yeah. culture but then the way I look at it like okay for that just one day if that's if I have to do it for just that then one I'll day that. then I'll do that but don't expect me to like prostrate in on my knees on the floor every single time I see you even like just the I don't know why is it so difficult for like our elders to like receive a warm embrace from their in-laws. That's like, because that's also love. No, you know, that's a way thing. of expressing how much you really love. Them. Now I understand where you're coming from. We are coming from two different cultures here because now the culture is infiltrated. Like you coming from an African background and being mixed with a with a, um, the um, society here. Okay. You know the way it's done here is different from the way it's done over there. In in this kind of place, people tend to kiss their parents, hug their hug their parents, which I do. But you don't give. For me, I didn't grow up hugging and kissing or pecking my parents. No, so in that instance, it's expected of me to kneel and greet them. But here, you hug, and when you hug, there's nothing wrong. There's not no problem about it. Now, you have to try. To blend the two, of course you have boundaries. Like okay, now from everything you've spoken about, mm. these are your boundaries. These are the lines that you can't really cross. And if you try to cross it, it's because you're just relapsing the boundary a bit. It's not even relapsing. It's more so I'm being fake because I feel okay. like I'm not being the true me. Because if you want me to, obviously I want to express myself and show you how much I really, you know, this is something that truly makes me happy. So, if you so now you're telling me to me down. I'm doing it forcefully, not because I wanted to do it. Nobody so will tell you to. But that's what it's I'm saying. It's just something that is expected it's of expected you. of me. So because it's expected of me, I'm doing it now willingly. I'm mm. doing it because you want me to do it. You understand mm. what I'm saying? So because I'm doing it because somebody else wants me to do it, is basically expecting me to do it, does not make me in any way happy about it. Like, I would do it, but then at the end of the day, in, my, in the back of my head, it's like, why am I doing you this? Know, there's just this thing I, I used to laugh at, like, now I call you, oh, Auntie Doe. In my mind, I'm calling you Doe. Exactly, that's you know, what I'm saying. That's the kind of the way it is. Like, oh, she wants me to call her, right? I know what. It's I'll like call I you. remember. But right in my mind, I'm that's what I'm you saying. By your name. I think I think uh, we uh, was talking to a friend of mine that we both obviously know who the person is. We were talking and we were talking about like growing up, people always expect you to call them Auntie, Auntie, mm -hmm. Auntie. Yeah. And obviously, you don't see this person as an Auntie, but well, because you're being forced to do it. You call it, and I remember growing up doing it. You, I don't say auntie, I call it auntie, but you do that P in such a silent <laughs> stuff, like in such a silent ways that they didn't catch on. Okay. But it's like I'm not doing it well because I want to do it, but because you're forcing me, I will say it, but in a rude way. I will attach something else to the front of it, mm. basically teasing you at the end of it. So to me, it's like, why am I doing something that I'm not truly happy about? Like if I give you, a, if, even like just that half bent, I'm still happy to to do it. But now you're telling me I must push straight on my knee, knee, like. Well, you know, some things are actually inborn. <laughs> some things are some things you actually grow up with. But the issue still stands for 
when you have boundaries, mm. it's very nice for people to actually respect our boundaries. There is a limit, even in friendship. Right. There is a limit. Obviously, Maybe in you're every limit. you confided yeah. in me. You didn't tell me to, to you go ask to me tell someone else. Obviously not. So that means I'm, if I tell someone else, I'm going Breaking, out of yeah. it. You understand? So at that point in time, and this is what I see that is really, really, really not good. Mm. Even a child growing up has a boundary too. Mm. Like if a child sees me and runs to me, oh, I run back. But tomorrow the child might look at me and say, I don't just want to greet. Exactly. And then the, the, the mother or the father is like, what's wrong with you? Why not do this? You should, I think we should understand that children also have their Obviously. own limits. Everyone, we all have our own limits. Mm -hmm. We all have our boundaries. Yeah. And then we should learn to speak out. Mm. This is what I don't want. And for me, if, I, if maybe someone older offends me, and I know that if I talk to the person, the person might not understand, mm. then I kill it within me. And inside of me, I know that I already draw my boundaries. Mm. Maybe I used to laugh too much. If right. You, you cut it off. Right. You know, all those things. It just people let, I think people People watch change it. too. At the end of the day, it's like, as you get older, you change. Mm. Same things that you used to do, you mm -hmm. no longer do it. So it's like just a part of life. As you get older, your boundaries, everything it changes. Increases. Exactly. Yes, yes. So that's the thing. That's what I, uh, I remember I mentioned at the beginning, like, okay, maybe the first time I met you. Mm. It's like this big wall mm -hmm. of boundaries, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, level that you can't, exactly <laughs> like you just can't come through. Yeah. But the longer we get to know each other, then little by little, yeah, then yeah. so it's the same thing. So like maybe the first time I meet you, I'll say hi. Mm. The, the next, the more we interact, I give you a hug or mm -hmm. something. So it's like, oh, I'm getting to know you better. I trust you more. So it's like the level of trust that we have. The le you know, so that's what and I. And then people should stop manipulating emotional blackmail. Exactly. Like oh. So you won't do this. You know, someone, maybe somebody who tends to want to be giving you things. Mm -hmm. And then because the person feels, okay, I buy this for her. I, I bought this for him. Mm -hmm. Oh, that shoe. I, I like you it. Know, you know, the thing, or you just give, use it. you're giving somebody something. And then the person, because the person is doing you a favor. Mm -hmm. So the person expects you to dance to every tune. Oh, no, that's the worst. That's, I would not be and then when you decide to pull up your boundary like see guy or lady I can't, right. I can't do this mm -hmm. and the person tells you I used to give are you talking to exactly. me is it me that you're, you're doing that to, to like, right. you know I think we need to snap out of that that thinking that thinking because it's really really not good you're, it's an opportunity you need to give people room to express themselves mm -hmm. even if you're giving the person the whole world mm -hmm. even exactly. as husbands you know, even in marriage, the boundaries, I can see, like, okay, you're married, God forbid, the person waits for a long time, mm. and the family comes and says, you are just eating our son's food. You know, they've gone beyond the boundary. Obviously. You are not, there's a limit. It's like, the marriage is, be is still between those two. Exactly. Just not, because we're family, the, uh, because you're family, does exactly. not mean you have that right to be able to, like, exactly. say whatever. And I think that's mm -hmm. the issue. That in a, in marriages, especially in the African marriages, family tends to feel like they have the right to be to say exactly, something. Exactly. Yes. And I feel like regardless of it says marriage is between two people. Two people. Remember. You know. So <laughs> I don't understand why like anyone think it's okay to put their you know own personal you know mouth yes. into like anybody else's business, regardless of whether they're your children or not. At the end of the day, it's still between those two. They should still be able to. So they, now you know, if they set their boundaries like it's not disrespectful. I don't think it's it just, is. It's just that it's difficult for people to understand that directly or indirectly there are boundaries. But I think that it's you also very it's cross. always also tough for the couple, I think, at times to say something to their parent like, Okay, I we respect you, you know, and we appreciate your input, but we would like to, you know, and do this by ourselves. I feel like that's the ne that's the way to go about it. Maybe it's just like some people have a hard time saying that to their parent because they feel like, you know, they raised us, they, you know, do all these mm. things for her. So obviously we don't want to, what's the, uh, we don't want to hurt them by That's saying. That's a problem. Yeah, but I feel You like need to speak out. If you don't hurt you them, you don't hurt yourself yes, at the end of the day. You, yes, you keep hurting yourself. <laughs> it's true because it's like you don't want life. people to feel like, okay, I'm being disrespectful. Exactly. Or maybe you, let's say mom says, okay. I want to come to your house and like, oh, and you your wife do doesn't that? have the time. I said that we don't even have the ability right now. Maybe we can't just. Maybe you're well, we're very the busy. We're exactly. just busy. To be and that we're because busy. you don't want your mom to feel sorry. You say come so on you don't over. Don't say come in exactly. And when you come over, you're, you're all 
Crap you're grumbling. Yeah, like, oh, nah. this is not the right time. I won't be that person. Exactly. <laughs> you need to speak out and speak out respectfully. I refuse you to be to that person. This. Exactly. You need to, to learn to do all of these things. Don't try to please people. I think that's when the problem. You are, we tend you... to want to please a lot of times that mm-hmm. at the end of the day we end up... Because I remember I used to do it a lot too. I think I, as I get older, I was like, you know what? I think also having my brother, my younger brother, I was like, you listen, you care too much. <laughs> you listen to start having that attitude of I don't care, but not necessarily that you don't care, but you just always have to think about yourself at the end of the day. You know, there's this story of a guy that he kept doing things for people. He shows love, right. attention, and everything. Right. And you know, he's getting choked up. Do while doing it. While doing it. So, so he, doing? he had to meet exactly. He had to meet with a therapist, and then the person asked. He said. I don't like this that I'm doing. He said, the, the person now said, you don't love, it's not love. That's not love. Because if you love someone, if you it's love really what you're doing, yeah. you won't feel, you won't feel bad. You won't get tired. Yeah. You won't be complaining yeah. because it's something you love doing. Yeah. So if it's something you don't love doing, if it's the one you can have, afford to do, do. And, and then I think have, people will even be able to tell because when you're yes. doing something, but not out of love, you're doing it. People can easily tell well, that you're not your doing face. it. Because yeah, all it's all it's written with the way you're doing it. That's why mm-hmm. I said I would not do something when I'm not, I don't, if I'm not happy about doing something, I'm, I'll simply not do it. Because the way, the end result, mm. I won't be satisfied with it. And the person I'm doing it for will not be satisfied with it either. So it's like, why am I forcing myself to do something that I'm not happy about? So I find it always like, very, to be honest, and mm-hmm. I've been accused at times that, oh, the way I say things, I come, I'm too, what you call it. But I feel yeah. like, I shouldn't have to hide. I shouldn't have to, to be fake. Exactly. I shouldn't have to fake it just so that to make the other person happy. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I'm not happy. But you you might be smiling at the end of the day, but then in, in the back of my head, it's like, wait, what? Mm. Why did I just say all that bunch of lies? Like, no, it's not me. So I'd rather get the backlash, but at least I know what, you know, I'm truthful with myself, mm. you know? So 